Welcome to church this morning, Clovey. It's great to see you here with us. If you'd like to stand, we're just going to sing and worship our God. When all I see is a battle. When all I see is the battle. You see my victory. I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am saved So when I fight So when I fight I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God Battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. And I find With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Never fear, I lay at your feet. I sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs. So when I fight, so when I fight, I fight on my knees. With my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night. Oh God, that belongs to you. And no mighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of thy You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of thy God. Yeah, when I fight, so when I fight, fight on my hands lifted high oh god the battle belongs to you every fear i lay at your feet i see through the night oh god the battle belongs to you so when i fight i fight on my knees with my hands lifted high oh god the battle belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet, I see through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle. 
title belongs to you. Would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the words to say. But this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs. Your name, you alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujah and a thousand more. Who else would die for our redemption? Whose resurrection is our right There isn't time enough to sing of all your time Eternity to try With a thousand hallelujahs song is forever yours, a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more, a thousand more, praise to the The King of Heaven, for He rose. Now He reigns. We will sing forever. To the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King. Of Jesus. 
Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. This next song we're going to sing is called Heart of Worship. It's a bit of an oldie, but a goodie. Um, and just as I was, as I was preparing for this morning, um, just thinking about you know the new year and it's a chance to start over and thank God for for new days and new years and new chances. And um, just last year was, was was a bit of a hard one um, for for our family. And um, it's just as I was as I was worshiping, I was just feeling God saying, just just come back to the heart of worship. Forget about all that. Forget about all that's been going on. Just come back to, to the heart of worship and worship me. So we're going to sing, sing heart of worship. When the music fades. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of Endless Work. The King of Endless Work, no one could express. How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Here's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things happen You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. coming back 
I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my what a beautiful name it is Nothing can What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord knows how Your hidden glory and creation Now revealing you are Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ what a beautiful name it is Nothing can this it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus We didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought Was great, your love was greater. Who I could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is! Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of could not hold you death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you I raise to life Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name! What a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is! Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is! The name you have no rival. 
so powerful. Thank you, Lord, that we can live and walk in the power of your victorious name. And Lord, we come to you now in prayer as we continue to worship and as we continue to glorify you. And I sense today that God is inviting us back into simplicity. And so I love to lead us in the Lord's prayer. And so you might want to posture yourself in a way that feels right for you. You might want to stay standing. You might want to become seated. You might want to put your hands out before you. Whatever that posture of prayer and connection looks like before you, you may like to kneel where you are. I invite you to do that now. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Your name is mighty. Your name is powerful. May your kingdom come here. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we see glimpses of your goodness, of your glory, of your power today, Lord God. Lord, give us today the food that we need. Provide for us all that we need and we trust you that you are the great provider. Lord, forgive us. We are messy and broken and sinful people. Forgive us our sins. And Lord, as we forgive those who sin against us, please help us to show the same grace that you have first showed us. Lord, lead us not into temptation. Whatever we are struggling with, the temptation that we are grappling with, I pray we would feel the strength of your spirit today and protect us from the evil one. He has no power in our lives. With you, Lord Jesus, is our King. Yours is the kingdom, Lord. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. And we said, amen. Amen. Well, feel free to grab a seat wherever you are. It is so great to be with you today in the room and online. And actually, I'm just messing with you. If you're here in the room, can you jump back up? And can you say hello to someone you haven't said hello yet to yet today? Sorry about that. If you're online, I would love you to jump in the chat and let us know what you've been getting up to this week. We'd love to connect with you. going with me on that one. Sorry I got you down and then back up. Online, I hope you've had some great time in the chat together today. Let's bring it back together. It's so good to be with you. 
welcome. If this is your first time with us today, I'd love to extend a special welcome. And if we haven't met before, my name's Ash. I'm part of the team here at Clovey. And if you're visiting us or you want to get to know us a little bit better, we would love to connect with you. If you're online, just click connect with us and our team will be in touch. If you're here in the room today, out the doors, uh, just by the front door to your left is a place called Next Steps. And that's where our team is ready to greet you, to get to know you, to chat to you about anything in the life of the church. Or if you're a part of our church already, if you're ready to take a next step like serving or baptism, our team would love to connect with you about that there. And parents, you guys are smashing it. School holidays, well done. Uh, if the kids need a little bit of space to run around, the parent lounge is out the back to your right. And we also have the nursery for our little ones. And those are stay and play spaces. And uh, parents of older kids, we have some kids packs that hopefully you've grabbed on your way in. If you need them, they're just by the doors uh, to the auditorium. Feel free to go and grab them at any point. Well, hopefully uh, you've got our team Clovey launch in your diary. If you serve in any part of the life of our church, of Pathway, of Treasured, any department at Clovey, then you are part of Team Clovey. And we love to launch the year together. So Monday, February 6th, 7 p.m., both at Mobbury North and online, we're gonna be gathering together for some all-in time. Pastor Mike's gonna bring in encouragement for the start of the year. And for that first hour from seven to eight, there is child minding from children from the ages, from babies up to year six. And then from about eight o'clock, uh, child minding will close and we'll split into our team. So your ministry leaders will have some more information about that for you. But it's a night you don't want to miss. It's awesome to come together and launch the year as one team. Well, each year, church, we participate in a time of prayer and fasting together. And so I wanted to let you know when that's going to be so you can save the dates. Uh, so we're going to be doing that from the 13th to the 24th of February this year. And so you can pop that into your diaries. Fasting is an opportunity to go without something, uh, to focus our attention on God and to, to declare that He is the one that we need that sustains us and it draws us into um, that focus. And so then we pray into certain things. This year we'll be following the Lectio 365 app and praying into uh, what is in that content and also meeting in community and groups and praying together. So uh, keep an eye out for more information on that. But the 13th to the 24th of February, we'd love you to sense what God is saying uh, to you and to our church. Well, here at Clovey, there are three ways to give, and we are so thankful for your generosity. Your generosity allows us to reach people for Jesus and to see them be connected with Him as Lord of their life. And as the online pastor, I had the privilege of running Alpha Online with a team last year, and we had a number of participants engage. Uh, we were able to host them for a whole day on Zoom at one point, a Holy Spirit day, and uh, we were able to give them a lunch voucher and things like that. And your giving is having impact in lives. From that course, we had one particular person really reconnect in faith in an incredibly powerful way, and many other stories that emerged from each of those people. So thank you so much for your giving. Uh, if you call Clovey home, there are three ways to do that and they have been up on the screen or you can go to clovey.com.au forward slash give. Would you pray with me today? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are Lord of our lives. We thank you that you are blessing each of us with what we need. God, I thank you that you see each of us, you know each of us, whether we are online or we are in the room today. You know us, you see us, you love us, and you are leading us, God. I pray, Lord, that we would continue to meditate on the prayer that you taught us to pray, Jesus, that we would know that your name is Holy Father, that you are with us, you're giving us all that we need, that you forgive us and help us to forgive others and that you are leading us not into temptation, but delivering us from the evil one. Lord, I pray that would be truth over our lives this week. And Lord, as we come to your word, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would speak. You would draw our focus to you, to what you are saying uh, through Emma as she preaches today. Would you bless her uh, and be with us, Lord, as we gather and hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church, hope that you're going really well. Well, it's my pleasure and privilege today to introduce Emma Wiggins. Emma's going to be bringing the word. She's going to be talking about peace and surrender. So let's put our hands together for Emma Wiggins. Hey, church, hope that you're going really well. Well, it's my... Good morning, everyone. How are we? 
Good, that's good. There's a lot more people in here than I thought there was going to be halfway through January. So it's lovely to see you all here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Emma. Um, I have been a part of the Clovey family for about 14 years since I was a teenager um, and have been involved in just about every ministry except worship ministry. I can't sing to save my life. Um, as much as I wish I could. Um, I'm married to Tim, so a little bit about our family. Married to Tim, you might have seen him on the worship team. He's the really, really tall one, often used as a unit of measure in our family. So um, is it as tall as Tim? Yes, okay, that's good to know. If not, you know, Uncle Tim is the measure. Um, and very excitingly, you might have seen me awkwardly waddle up on stage. We are expecting our first baby at the end of February. So really exciting times for us. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, this morning, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey with me. So when Michelle asked me if I would share with you all um, about what's been going on in my life and in the things God's been teaching me, I really wanted to bring that to you in a really raw and vulnerable way. So I'm going to be quite open with you today, and I hope that um, as I open up, you also um, come prepared, ready to allow God to speak to you. Um, and allow him to open up your life for what he would like to do with it. So let's get going. I'm going to ask you a question to start this morning. Do you have a what if person in your life? A what if person, they like to plan all the possible potential scenarios that might happen and they have a plan for every single one. So, oh, what if it's going to be a bit cold tonight? Maybe I'll bring an extra jacket. What if I'm out longer than I expected and I get hungry, might need some extra snacks? What if I go into labour on the stage this morning? Just kidding, Ash, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> what if people love to plan and prepare? You might see in your family as the person who packs like they're going away for a month when they're actually going away for a week because, you know, it could snow in Queensland. You just never know. Got to be prepared for these things. Or your what if person might be someone who likes to have people over for dinner, but when they do all the planning and the cooking, they could also feed the entire street, not just people coming over. What if people love to plan and prepare? And I'd imagine for most of us sitting here, you can think who that person might be. It might even be you. You might not be a what if person over your entire life, but you might have one area that you like to keep really close, that you like to plan and prepare. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a teacher and my whole life is full of planning, preparing, anticipating the needs of my students. When it comes to a lesson, it's, well, what if they grasp this concept really quickly? How am I going to get some more activities into the lesson that are meaningful and allow them to apply their knowledge? On the flip side, what if uh, they don't get what I'm trying to teach them? How am I going to come back, try it again, and wrap up the lesson even though I didn't get everything I wanted to get done? What if there are some misconceptions from previous years? The list can go on and on and on and on, which you would know if you've ever been stuck in a conversation with a teacher who likes to talk about their curriculum. We can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about all the things uh, going on in the classroom. But for me, because this is my everyday way of living, it's kind of filtered into the rest of my life as well. It's how I learn to function. I think about every potential scenario that might exist and I think, okay, well, how can I be prepared for? How can I plan for? How can I have something that is ready to go when this situation arises? And it's in this planning, maybe excessively sometimes, that I've come to find my peace. That when I think of a situation and I think about all of the different things that could occur, I think, okay, well, how am I going to deal with this if it comes up? How am I going to deal with this? And my peace has come from having a plan that covers everything. Now, you might be looking at me and those of you who have children might be laughing at me because <laughs> that is about to change. <laughs> um, but when I first found out that I was pregnant, we were so excited but I also had a moment where I started to panic. I do not know enough about a growing person. I don't know anything about babies. I don't know about how to raise children. I don't have this information to be able to plan for every possible scenario. There are too many things to be able to create a plan for. I would be there for the rest of my life trying to have a plan for every situation. 
And so when we found out that we were pregnant, we were so excited, but I actually had this moment of terror. What are the next nine months gonna hold for me? Am I gonna be okay? I cannot plan for all of the things that might happen in this pregnancy. I can't even do anything. This person is just doing their thing in there. And once they're born, what does that mean for us? It was actually really scary to go, okay, this life that I've been living, this way of planning and being able to be prepared for everything, it's actually going to let me down and I don't know what to do now. But God always has a way of breaking through to us, which I love, that no matter the situation that we're in, he can speak to us in any way. And so I was walking through my house and I walked past this beautiful pot plant that was sitting in my bookcase. Now, I've walked past this hundreds of times before, but never really been struck by the verse that's on there. It was a gift from one of my students a few years ago, which I thought, how awesome that God would use something so small to speak such a word into my life. So the verse says, Jeremiah 17, 7, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And it was in that moment that I was forced to pause and I had to ask myself, do I really trust God with, any, with everything? If I am doing all of this planning and all of this preparing for all of these situations in my life, have I actually allowed God the space to have control? And it was really scary because I had to pause and ask myself, did I actually trust God with my baby? And that's, you know, I've, I've been a Christian almost my entire life. Um, and to have to force myself to ask a question, the most significant thing that is happening to me, do I actually trust God with that? So, you know, he, he doesn't just let you kind of get through. When God's got something to say to you, he is going to say it and he's going to say it loud. So that's what I want to ask us today. I want to pose this question to you. Have you actually handed God control of every aspect of your life? Or are there some things you're still holding on to because it's easier if we keep control of them? It's too scary to allow God into the space to have control. Are you trying to manage it yourself? So if you have your Bible um, or your phone or you'd like to follow along on the screens, we're going to have a look at Jeremiah 17 verses 5 to 8. Jeremiah 17 verses 5 to 8. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Although not overtly stated in those verses, the question that is posed to us is in whom do you trust? Do you trust in the things that you can see and the things that you can control? Or do you trust in the ability of God? Now, the context surrounding these verses involve the people of God uh, living in a cycle of unfaithfulness, where they were turning to idols or pagan practices or other nations to help them in times of struggle. There was a threat posed to the people of God by Babylon and Assyria. And there were those people who decided to trust in themselves and their own army or to turn to others, to turn to an enemy nation of Egypt to help them. Ultimately, this led to Jerusalem falling and people were led into exile. It seemed as if turning to God was the last resort option for these people. In these verses and in the preceding chapters, Jeremiah is urging the people to turn back to God as their source, their source of hope, of strength and of deliverance. He should always be the first option, not the last resort. And whilst we are really lucky, we don't live in a world where we are under threat of being invaded, 
We too have our idols and our practices that stop us turning to God first in times of struggle. We can be quick to rely on money to solve our problems, on self-help guides, on social media, on podcasts, on the words of people that we know. We can even turn to Google. Has anyone ever done that before? You've got a problem and you just type the question into Google. And sometimes you don't even have to type the whole thing. Like the other half of it appears and you're like, cool, so I'm not the only person with this problem. There are obviously a lot of people asking this question. But we can turn to Google to give us the advice that we need in our lives. Now, these things aren't bad. They can actually be really helpful to us. But the question that I want to ask this morning is where is God in this process? Did we turn to him as our last resort? Or did we turn to him first and seek his guidance, his wisdom and his direction rather than trying to sift through all of the information in the world around us to get some clarity? Maybe our situation is the breakdown of a relationship. Maybe it's a job loss or what to do now that we're approaching the end of school or uni and we have no idea about the future. Maybe it's a conversation that you have to have that you know is going to be tough. Or maybe it's a family member or a friend who's really going through a time of struggle. I wonder if we're honest with ourselves, what is the potential idol for you? Where do you turn first when things get a little bit tricky, get a little bit tough? Do you turn to God first? Or do you try and work it out on your own and then come to him later? For me... I am really bad at going to Google. I just love information because when you've got information, you can create a plan and I love to plan things. So I often find myself getting out my phone, typing questions into Google and then having to sift through the blogs, the websites, the articles, all of these things that are full of information. And I could spend hours researching, but I wonder if I have gone to God first, would it be different? Would the outcome be different than if I spent all these hours wading through this information online. But just as in the time Jeremiah wrote these words, the contrast stands between trusting in God and trusting in our own ability. Last week, Ash gave us a metaphor as God as our shepherd who promises to care for us, protect us, and to always be with us. She explained why God is trustworthy. So if you haven't had a chance to go and listen to last week's message, I really encourage you to go back and to really listen and dig into this idea of God as our shepherd and why he's so trustworthy. In the metaphor laid out in Jeremiah, though, we kind of get this extension. We're looking at what does it look like? What does the picture look like when we trust in our own ability versus when we trust in the ability of God? Jeremiah lays out really clear comparisons. The cursed man, which is the one who trusts in man, trusts in what we can see and what we can control, is like a shrub in the desert, lives in the wastelands and in the parched places of the desert. The blessed man who trusts in God is like a tree planted by the water. Its leaves are always green and it's able to bear fruit. The contrast that we're given highlights that both of these plants can actually survive. They're both actually growing, but they are in very, very different environments. The bush in the desert, it struggles. Water is scarce. It's pretty much living to survive. But plenty of plants can still grow in the desert. It's just very different to what it looks like when you look at a plant that's growing by the water. When we contrast this to the tree, it's planted by the water, so it actually has everything that it needs. It's near a water source, and because it's near a water source, it has more than enough to survive. The tree is actually able to flourish. The verse says that it's always green and it's able to bear fruit. When it's planted next to the source, the tree is able to thrive. I don't know about you, but I know which plant I would rather be. Now, you might have noticed my lovely little prop here, my pot. Um, But depending on how far away you're sitting, you may or may not have noticed that's a fake plant. Um, (laughs) And there is a reason for that, unfortunately. Um, I have killed every plant that I have tried to grow in this pot. Um, I really love plants. I just cannot keep them alive. Uh, My family, no one would call me a green thumb. No one would trust me with their plants. In fact, every time we go to Bunnings, I'm like, oh, this plant is so nice. Tim is like, no more plants, Emma. No more plants. You cannot handle taking care of a plant. And so as much as I try in myself 
to take care of the plants that sit in this pot, they eventually all end up in the greens bin because they have shriveled up and died. So sometimes for a little while, they look like they're doing okay. They're green. Sometimes I get a bit tricked because they shoot new leaves and I'm like, oh, I'm so good at caring for plants. It's just loving life here. But eventually they turn yellow or my like really devastating moment, they go crispy. Has anyone had that happen to them? The edge of their plant starts going crispy and then you're like, oh no, here it comes. That can't be saved. And they end up dying. So as much as I would love to be a plant person, I cannot keep plants alive. And that kind of mirrors when we try to do things in our own ability. When we try and do things ourselves, we might be getting through the situation. It might even look like we're doing okay for a while. And you might be sitting here today thinking, I'm actually doing okay. I'm resilient. I'm getting by. I can get through this. But God offers us so much more than just getting through this. When we surrender to God and trust that he has everything under control, we have more than enough to survive. We can thrive living in the God-given plan and purpose for our lives. When we trust that in God we have all we need, we don't need to fear the time of heat when we know that those struggles are going to come. Now, when I was thinking about trust, I was a little bit curious about its definition. Probably the teacher in me, I just like to know things, how they work. Um, so interestingly, trust has a noun and a verb definition. So when we think of trust as a noun, it's described as assured reliance or confidence. And it's a beautiful picture and an amazing end goal for us to have in sight. But it doesn't actually spur us on to any action. And that's why I love the verb definition. Remember, a verb is a doing word, everyone, if you haven't been to school in a little while. So it actually requires something of us. The verb definition is described as relying on, to hope or to expect confidently. So how do we rely on and expect confidently that God will provide for us when times are tough? Proverbs verses 3 to 5, which is a really well-known passage, gives us an insight into what it means to actually trust in God and to rely on him when times are hard. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. The idea of trusting in God is inextricably linked to the idea of submission, surrender, laying down what we hold close so that God is able to move and is able to work. So let's have a look. Let's break down this verse and see what it actually means. So when we have a look at lean on, not on your own understanding, it urges us to seek God's wisdom and direction rather than relying on what we can see and find and control ourselves. Our understanding is limited, but God is always all-knowing. So how can we lean on his understanding if we never actually invite him in? If we wait until the last resort, we're not leaning on his guidance. We're not leaning on his wisdom. We're kind of saying, well, I know all these things. And God, if it doesn't work, then your way will work at the end. By going to him first, it can change our perspective on a situation. It gives us his eyes to see solutions rather than spending the time trying to figure it out ourselves. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. Reminds us that God has a plan for each of our lives. And if we give control over to him, he will guide and direct us where we need to go. We don't need to work out the direction for ourselves. And submit means to lay down, to let go of, to place before God. And when we lay down the situations that we face, it means that God is able to carry the burden instead of us trying to carry the burden ourselves. And with all your heart and in all your ways challenges us that God wants all of us, not just the small parts, the parts that seem convenient, the things that are easy to give over. God wants our hopes. He wants our dreams. He wants the struggles. He wants the challenges. He wants the fears. He wants us to lay everything before him. When we have big changes in our lives, do we seek God's direction on what to do or do we try and map out the future ourselves? When we have a tricky conversation that we have to have with people in the workplace, at school or with our kids, do we ask God to be present and seek his insights into the conversation? 
when we jump to action to support friends and family members who are struggling, have we also taken the time to pray for them and their situation? When we understand the power of trusting the Lord, we find confidence in surrendering our lives to him. The blessings that Jeremiah is talking about are knowing God's peace, knowing his protection, his provision, his joy, his love and his discipline and his peace. It's this peace that's gotten me through my pregnancy this far. I figured out pretty quickly that I was not going to be able to do this alone. There was no way I would make it through these nine months if I was going to try and figure everything out myself. And I know that it's this peace that will get me through life as a parent because I can't do this alone. I know that if I try and do it alone, I will be the shrub in the desert, that I'll be struggling to survive, I'll be stressed when there's times of heat, and I'll be unable to thrive. The peace that I have experienced by surrendering to God, and for me, it's every day. I have to surrender every day my life and the life of our baby and our family to God goes far beyond the peace that I could have created by creating my excessive plans of all of the different situations. My confidence for our baby and for our family rests in the Lord and there is freedom in knowing that I can trust in him and I don't need to worry about the future. So the challenge for us today is do we rely on his word depending on his character and promises rather than trying to control every aspect of life ourselves? Do we choose to rest in him rather than to worry and to try and solve the problems ourselves? Matthew 6, 25 to 34 tells us not to worry, but rather to trust in God's provision. He knows us and he knows what we need. He requires us to have the faith that in any situation, he will give us what we need to get through. We don't need to sort it out ourselves. We're going to go into a time of reflection this morning where I'd love you just to sit and reflect on the words of Jeremiah. Jordan and the band are going to sing over us and I'd really encourage you to take the time to look at the words on the screen and take them to heart. This song is a song you may know, you may never have heard before, um, but it was a part of my journey where not long after God spoke to me through my pot plant, um, I heard this song. And for me, these two things are linked so closely in my journey, and I really wanted to share that with you this morning um, in the journey of where God has been taking me in faith and in surrender. So as we listen, I want you to consider... Are you living as a desert bush or are you living as the watered tree? How do you need to turn from trusting in yourself or in others to trusting in God? And in what areas are we struggling to trust him and to hand over? Whether you are the watered tree ready to bear fruit or you're the desert bush that's been trying to survive on your own, God has so much more to offer us when we surrender everything to him. So let me pray for you, um, and then we're going to go into a time of reflection. Lord, thank you so much that you see us and that you know us and that you are a personal God. You walk with us through everything. Father, wherever we are in our journey this morning, I just pray that you would be speaking to our hearts. Lord, if we need to commit back to you to surrender certain areas of our lives, Lord, would you help us to do that? Lord, help us to come back to you as our source. Lord, would you give us the courage to surrender over the, surrender and hand over the things that we hold close? Lord, if we are thriving, if we have been uh, resting in you, Lord, we are connected to that source and we are ready to bear fruit in a new part um, of life as we approach 2023 with its new challenges and new opportunities. Lord, I just pray that we would surrender the future over to you. Father, would you lead us and guide us? Would we follow your direction? And would we follow uh, where you want us to go so that we might bring glory to your name? In Jesus' name, amen. Standing on the edge of everything I know. Come. 
comfort is behind me. I've got to let that go. There's freedom in the free fall. And I'm falling into you. God knows where I'm going. Maybe I don't have to. I lay me down at the altar over and over, over and over. From fear to faith, I surrender. Over and over, over and over. You take all my questions as I wrestle to the ground. And patiently, you guide me. Beyond what I see now I don't have all the answers Trust is what I need My comfort is in knowing You're right here next to me I lay me down at the altar over and over, over and over. From fear to faith, I surrender over and over, over and over. I lay me down at the altar. Beautiful. 
winter over and over over and over from fear to faith I surrender over and over over and over Lord thank you that you are trustworthy Lord, we uh, surrender now. Bring us from fear to faith. Holy Spirit, increase our faith. We lay down what is to come. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, next month, and into the future. We lay down what is to come. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that as we trust you, we will be like a tree planted by water. So, Lord, we submit and we surrender to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, what a significant word. Can we thank Emma? Thanks, Emma. recognize that a word like that can be one that we wrestle with and so if you would like prayer today uh, myself and Emma will be down the front we would love to pray with you online you can click request prayer right now and we would love to pray with you otherwise I just need to let you know that next week again is a 10 a.m. service we're all together at 10 a.m. Marbury North and online And then on the 29th is when we return to 9 and 11 a.m. and Clovey Kids will be back. Quench is open again today. So if you're here in the room, I encourage you, linger, have a coffee, connect with each other, say hi to someone you don't know, and we'll catch you next week. Go well.